Hello. Today we're going to talk about the first step of the design process, which is really the problem definition. So you really want to nail this down before you start to do any design, because if you don't know what you have to design or what specifications or what the objectives are, then you're going to really have a hard time answering or solving the, cl the client's problem. So we're going to make up a hypothetical problem. We're going to say we have a client who has a piece of property, maybe it's a house up in the mountains, and it tends to have the pipes freeze when the heating system stops working. And it could stop working for various different reasons. Maybe there's a gas interruption, you know, maybe the power went out. You know, the end result though is that you know, the building gets cold and the pipes freeze. So what's their problem? You know, their problem is that their building is getting cold and the pipes are freezing. And so we have to come up with a problem statement for that. And we want to make something that's succinct and clear and is really kind of can stand on its own. There's not a lot of extra stuff in there. So our problem statement might be that we want to monitor, monitor the home to prevent pipes from freezing. And so if you have a good problem statement, it could really be your guiding light in the sense that whenever you have a question about your design, if you should go one way or another way, you can look back at your problem statement and see if whatever you're doing is bringing you to solve that actual problem. So here's our problem statement, monitor a home to prevent the pipes from freezing. So now that we have that sorted out, we can clarify some of the objectives. So you know, one of the first things we might want to do is monitor the HVAC system. Is it turned on? Is it running? So, so HVAC is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Here, obviously, it's heating. But now, another objective might be to monitor the room temperature. Regardless if the system's working, if the temperature of the room gets cold, there's another problem. And then we might want to notify someone. It doesn't do us any good if we know something is wrong, but we don't get the information out. So it's a notification. So notice as I'm putting these down, I'm not putting down means which to do them. I'm just putting down the objectives. What do we have to do? So another thing could be size. We're building some kind of system. Is it going to be huge? Does it need to be small? So probably size minimization is important for this kind of thing. Another thing could be installation. Right? We have to have a contractor install this. Is it going to take them a whole day? Is it going to take them an hour? You know, that comes down to economics. And we can call it complexity. Right there. And then it could be configurational ease, right? Like if this is notifying someone, is it using a text message? You know, is it an Internet of Things type of thing? So configuration. And then cost is an objective we have to meet, right, if we want to make this a viable product. And then maybe there's an architectural component to it, right? Like, does it look good? You know, is, it, is the client going to be willing to live with it, right? If it's in their, if it's mounted on the wall of their house, you know, will it look good? So these are some of our objectives right here. And we have to look at these objectives and try to rank them in order, like which ones are the most important for our device in order to solve its problem. So, you know, it ended up that these are in sort of a priority order right here. Like it clearly has to be able to monitor whether the HVAC system is running we want to monitor the room temperature and notify. So these are really the primary objectives right here. Right? If it doesn't do these, then it's not going to be able to answer the problem statement and no one's going to really want it. So things like this are wants. You know, these are a little bit more like secondary, right? In terms of, you know, there's not just going to be the metrics for these aren't going to be as rigid as they are for these right over here. So now we have some objectives defined. We want to look at metrics. 
So metrics usually involve numbers where we want to put a metric on some of these objectives right here. So if you look at monitoring HVAC, what might some objectives be? So an example would be is to measure if the if the system is on. If it's a boiler, is the boiler getting hot? You know, is the gas firing? And uh, so that we want to monitor the temperature. So we could say the objective would be to to uh, make sure the temperature is within a certain range. And you know, so say we don't know what kind of system this is, but maybe it needs to be at you know 100 C or something like that, 100 degrees Celsius. And then another thing that might be important is how long it takes to monitor this. Like how fast does it respond? You know, does it take an hour to measure the temperature? That might be too long. No, but maybe 10 minutes isn't too bad. You know, in other words, if this breaks and it's cooling off, if we know 10 minutes after it breaks, 10 minutes, so less than 10 response, which is actually kind of generous. So, you know, these are two metrics. They're numbers there. Those are things that we're going to try to shoot for. So now we have monitoring the room temperature. And this one, we want to probably make sure that the room temperature stays at some kind of set point. So that's something that the user might set by doing a configuration. And, you know, maybe they want it to say, you know, if it's, you know, if the temperature is less than the set point, then you want to do some notifications here. So, but there could be some error associated with that. Do we need to know exactly what the temperature of the room is, you know, to, you know, one thousandths decimal place or something like that? Probably not. You know, maybe a degree is 20, right? Like if it's, you know, the set point is supposed to go at, say, like 10 degrees Celsius. If it was 9 or 11, it probably wouldn't matter. So we might want to specify it can go plus or minus 1 degree Celsius or something like that. So for a notification, a metric might be how fast does it notify someone and over what range. And so maybe, you know, we're in the age of the Internet, so notifications usually take a matter of seconds. So maybe we could be generous and say 10 seconds. You know, within 10 seconds, we want the notification to get out to whatever device that's receiving that or broadcasting it that's possible. And another thing would be, you know, statistically, how often does it complete its notification? And, you know, for something like this, we want it to be successful 100% of the time, but that's not always possible, you know. So maybe we'll say 99.99% you know, .99 of the time it actually has to go through. That's what we're willing to, to live with here. So size minimization, you know, maybe we want it to fit on a wall to be a small box so we could say maybe it's a 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter enclosure. So installation complexity, that would be how long does it take someone skilled in the art. Maybe we want it to install in less than two hours. Configuration is also another thing, you know, do we want to be sitting there for eight hours trying to program this? Probably not. So average person would probably want to spend maybe less than 30 minutes on it. And then the cost for our EK210 projects, we have a constraint of $400, and that's not necessarily what the production cost of this would be. You know, maybe we'd say it's $200, just out of the blue. And these are things you should have gotten from your client meeting. So architectural requirement could be, you know, does it need to be a certain color? If it's for Boston University, we probably want it to be red. And, you know, if it's not red, we might not be happy with that, but the device will still work. So these are objectives and metrics, and it just happened that I, you know, I wrote them down really kind of in, in rank order. You know, we're you know, monitoring the HVAC system and the room temperature and notifying the user are really primary. And then these are kind of in diminishing... Uh, significance right here. In other words, like, well, if it's not red, it's still a good device, and maybe we can live with that or we can paint it. So that's not going to be a showstopper. So things that are often showstoppers are called constraints. So a constraint would be something where if it goes over that limit, it's no good. Like, the, the client's not going to want it, and, uh, you know, it's just not going to work. So two big constraints are usually time and money, and you're going to experience that in this class. You know, if you turn this project in two semesters from now, you, know, you can't expect us to grade it. So time is certainly a constraint. Right? How many weeks or months do you have to complete the project? And that's a real thing in the real world. And then the other constraint 
is you have $400, and that's the budget that we're allowing you to build the prototype. So we know that prototypes usually cost more than production devices, so that's why you know, this one is greater than that, because you know, you're making things in small quantities and spending a lot of time perfecting stuff. So some other constraints might be we want this to be safe. Like if this device catches on fire, you know, likely to catch on fire, we're not going to really want it. Now that's certainly a showstopper, so safety is a constraint. So this right here sums up in a lot of ways the problem definition part. You know, it's not complete. Some of the projects are more complicated. We just really wanted to give you a show or an example of how we do this. And you're going to use this problem definition throughout your design process. You're going to refer back to it whenever there's a problem or not, a, or you know, if there's a conflict, like should we put LEDs on it or should we make sure the temperature controller works? You go back here and see well, what's more important. It's much more important that it monitors the temperature you know, than it has some kind of configuration light on it. You know, that might be an important part, but clearly if it doesn't do these things, then it's going to fail as a prototype. 